So it is the 51st day of the war. It is November 26th, 2023, about 5.30 p.m. Israel time, 10.30 a.m. on the eastern coast of the United States. And let's get started with good news. A lot of good news that happened over the weekend. Uh, first of all, the United States has entered the Gulf of Oman. That is the waterway close to uh, between Yemen and Iran. And uh, this will allow America to do a couple of things. Number one, first and foremost, it will intimidate Yemen and Iran to know that there are now uh, people blocking them and uh, and there to, to attack them if need be. The United States military is obviously one of the most formidable uh, forces in the world. So that is a that's a very good thing to start off. That's a, um, it also has blocked Iran shipments and has begun to bomb uh, bomb Houthi sites and bomb attackers um, that are just in the area. An American military site was bombed in Syria. And America unsuccessfully, and America uh, bombed it back, um, and uh, America stopped drones and a ballistic missile from hitting it. So the America's presence there is essential, uh, and we're grateful that it is there. The Eisenhower aircraft carrier is there. Um, and Iran is trying to supply Hamas. It's trying to supply Hezbollah. It's trying to supply the Houthis. What the American forces primarily are in the Mediterranean and now in the uh, in the Gulf of Oman are there to make sure that those supplies don't go through. So I know a lot of people were worried. We're going to get to the hostage updates in a minute, but a lot of people were worried about this time being a time where uh, Hamas members could go ahead and and uh, restock and and uh, refuel and and uh, get stronger. Uh, so uh, so first off, it also gives Israel a chance to relax and restock. A lot of soldiers were able to go home for Shabbat and they will come back at the end of the ceasefire. But um, this, this Hamas is not able to uh, restock their, their supplies and they're running out. So uh, so again, time, as we've mentioned over and over, time is always on, uh, on Israel's side. So the American forces there are stopping resupplying shipments from Iran to Hezbollah, Hamas, and the Houthis. So that's very good. Um, it also has stopped, it's playing a defensive role, stopping uh, missiles from flying across from Yemen to Israel. They've stopped three attacks so far. Um, and uh, so that is, uh, that's very, very good news that the United States is there. Okay. Um, the uh, the Egos unit, which is one of Israel's elite units, usually works with dogs. So while they have lost a lot of dogs, unfortunately, in their attacks, they are. They have also killed before the truce was put into place. The deal with the hostage fire. They were able to kill seventy one Hamas terrorists. They announced. So that is. Uh, that's very very good. Um, okay. Let's see what else. Israel is using um, its intelligence services more than ever to stop supplies from, like we mentioned a second ago, to come and cross. But this is Israel, not the United States, stopping it. So from Iran across the Middle East, um, Iran is trying to use smaller vehicles to try to get things across. Larger vehicles are easier to, to notice. But because Israel is able to, to, uh, to use its intelligence services and mark even smaller convoys, so, uh, so they're able to uh, to hit them um, using laser guided bombs by tagging with a laser the convoys as they go across, and then uh, and then being able to have guided bombs come and hit the supply chain later on. That also stops those Russian S four hundreds that we've talked about the air defense systems from uh, from being able to knock out Israel's uh, Israel's airplanes and missiles. These missiles, these guided missiles, can get past all of that resistance. Okay, um, Hamas, and the other good news is that uh, Hamas has admits that it has uh, killed a senior commander, uh, so, like Israel has. And others, Israel announced this senior commander having been killed last week, but Hamas uh, admitted it as well, which is a great thing that Hamas is admitting that its people are, are done. Um, Israel is surrounding the three major cities in North Gaza. Uh, so as soon as the ceasefire is over, Israel will again attack those cities. So that's uh, that's very good. Okay, let's get on to uh, one more piece of good news, which is a really great piece of good news. Um, the entries are people from Africa who are refugees who snuck into Israel. They usually, unfortunately, have been the source of a lot of trouble 
um, in Israel. And uh, they are refugees, and Israel is really not sure what to do with them. There are thoughts of deporting them, but one entry in was in Stay Road on the day of the attack and actually was next to an Israeli soldier who had been shot in the stomach and had suffered what should have been a life-threatening wound. But this entry in kept him alive the entire time. Um, as a reward, Israel gave him permanent residence inside of uh, inside of Israel. So that's a that's a very, very good uh, good news. Um so starting on uh, on bad news inside Judea and Samaria, what the world likes to call the West Bank, which is well, you know, the world always likes to talk about how there is settler violence in the West Bank, but ignores the three to six daily terror attacks that occur there. Hamas is continuously, they're not so strong there. A lot of people like to think that Hamas isn't in the West Bank. That's not true. They are. They're not as strong. And Fatah, their rivals from the Palestinian Authority, are in control of the West Bank. But Hamas does operate there. And what they've been trying to do is trying to cause a lot of distraction by uh, by encouraging their people to attack uh, Israelis inside. Those are people, people like me who live there um, and to, to try to draw the Israeli army away. It hasn't worked. The Israeli army has reservists that were called up specifically to guard Judea and Samaria and make sure things like this didn't happen. And they're doing an amazing job protecting us. Um, the uh, the Fatah, which is, again, is the is the armed party of the uh, of the Palestinian Authority. They're the PLO party. And they uh, they're supposed to be the moderates that are uh, going to be our peace partners. This is who President Biden is talking about is going to take over Gaza after Israel leaves and be able to be a, a source and, and a, and a source of, of peace in the region. Um, they came out, their senior, one of their senior leaders came out and said that the, the Hamas attack was a defensive attack. This is a point I want to make, and I hope that you'll, you'll pay attention to this analysis. They call it a defensive attack because what they say is and a lot of a lot of even non fatah people say this, but Palestinian apologists and activists throughout the world say that Israel was uh, occupying and and treating Palestinians in a uh, in a in a bad way, oppressing them, apartheid, um, genocide. Even they'll come out and say, and therefore the attacks were warranted and justified. Look, they say it's warranted and justified because they say it's defensive, it's resistance. Uh, yeah, and uh, and it's their freedom fighters. They're looking for the freedom. The Palestinian people could have had their own state and freedom in 1948. Uh, all throughout, all they had to do was negotiate with Israel. That's all they had to do is come up with an agreement with Israel. So the idea that they have uh, that they have to negotiate is absolutely absurd. Um, and unfortunately, that's what uh, that's what we're seeing. So when you see people say that it's defensive, understand what they're saying. They're saying because Israel acted so poorly against them, they had to respond and they had to respond violently. First of all, unbelievable to think that that rape would be OK, to think that beheading and, and burning babies would be OK. Um, and to think that the, the, the to attack civilians is a is a perfectly good form of resistance. There's no excuse for that. So even if you want to go ahead and say that that it was resistance, this was not an act of legitimate resistance. That's point number one. Point number two, you have a uh, you have you have an easier way of gaining your freedom without attacking, and that is simply by coming up and joining a peace deal. So the obvious intention of Fatah and of uh, of Hamas. When they and all the other Palestinian Islamic Jihad and all the other terrorist organizations and the civilians, the Palestinian civilians who are supposed to be the good people that participate in the attacks, is uh, all they all they could have done was uh, was simply made a a peace deal with uh, with Israel at any point, and that would have accomplished all of their goals. But their real goal, obviously, then is they're clearly showing it just to kill Jews. Okay, um, after the ceasefire. Israel is ready to move into central Gaza, right? They have mostly control of all of North Gaza, and uh, and then they would go and go into South Gaza and take control of all of Gaza. Those are the next stages, okay? Um, Hamas is now only able to really perpetrate smaller attacks. They are uh, they're losing their ability to to really attack well. And uh, just a piece of of information that you might not have seen elsewhere, which is that. Uh, Qatar made Qatar is the organization that uh, the country, sorry, that is pro Hamas. They support Hamas, but also have a relationship with the United States. They offer to be the intermediary between Hamas and the United States, which would then represent Israel in negotiations to get um, to get a uh, to get the the hostage deals done. Um, but they made uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu promise not to assassinate the Hamas leaders who live in Qatar on the ground of Qatar. So as long as 
Hamas leaders stay there, they will be fine. Okay, take that uh, however you like it, if you think that that was a good idea or not to uh, to sign that deal. But that is the deal, evidently, that Prime Minister Netanyahu agreed to. Um, one last, the two last points. Uh, international people who are not our friends, the Irish foreign minister um, came along and said, sorry, the Irish prime minister, I'm pretty sure, said that the uh, the hostages, one of the hostages uh, was, I had Irish citizenship. Um, her father is originally from Ireland and said, that she was lost and now she is found, as opposed to say that she was kidnapped. I, Ireland is a notoriously anti-Israel country um, and uh, and unfortunately pro-Hamas. Uh, so that tells you where Ireland is standing. Israel, in a sign of protest, this is how you this is how countries protest. They call the um, the emissary or the ambassador of that country in for a meeting. Um, it's like a talk down, you know, like getting yelled at by the principal, and that is how countries. Um, so show their protest and Israel did that, calling in the Irish uh, emissary to Israel today. Um, and then the Pope, the Pope, who a lot of people think the Pope is like this good guy uh, who is so nice. Popes have been notoriously the enemies of Israel for about 800 years. Um, they've been anti-Semites that are leading things like the Crusades against us. And you might think, well, that was back then, not now. The, uh, the Pope said that this isn't war, it's terrorism, accusing Israel of committing terrorist acts against the poor people of Hamas. Um, unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable that a man who claims to be a messenger of God would come along and say that. Let's finish off before we get to questions with uh, updates on the hostages. 26 hostages have been released so far, um, from senior citizens to women to children. Uh, Hamas considers all men um, doesn't matter anything about them as soldiers. Unreal. Okay. And then uh, Israel, Hamas claims that Israel broke the deal by not giving them the right tariffs and not by allowing aid to go um, to the north. And then Hamas delayed giving uh, giving back hostages. They're supposed to give back 13 hostages for uh, for three for four straight days. Uh, on the second day, they delayed by uh, by over uh, eight hours, by six hours maybe, by of giving back the hostages. Um, and that almost broke off the deal. Israel threatened to to break off the ceasefire and begin attacks at midnight. They gave back the, the hostages at uh, about 10 p.m. Hamas is also uh, also claiming, I'm not sure if I just said this, but Hamas claiming that Israel is not allowing aid to get to the north. Uh, Israel is claiming that Hamas is the one stopping the aid from getting to the north. And Hamas broke the uh, the deal that they had with Prime Minister Netanyahu to allow the International Red Cross to visit hostages. I have a, a, a feeling, unfortunately, that the reason why they're not allowing the Red Cross to visit the other hostages is because they don't, number one, they don't know where all the hostages are. And number two, some of the hostages are in really bad shape. Um, the hostages that we're seeing coming out now are seem to be in very good shape and seem to be very good. And it's almost like, oh, look how well look how nicely Hamas is treating them. Um, unfortunately, though, that's probably not the case. That's probably just with some of the uh, the hostages. Okay, uh, let's get to your questions from the last uh, last video. Uh, why did Germany raid Hamas terrorists? Um, Germany, this is from a couple of days ago, the news was that Germany had, had uh, found within the people that had immigrated into Germany uh, supporters of Hamas. So they had raided them. That's illegal. It's illegal anywhere to be a supporter of Hamas. Uh, financially and and uh, and concretely, so they had raided them and arrested them. Uh, what are they going to, next question, what are they going to do with the captured Hamas members that are in our jails? Um, that's a very good question. I don't know. It would always, one of the reasons why I'm a big advocate for executing terrorists or anyone that supports terrorists, again, after a trial and after they've been convicted and they have a good defense, but the reason why I'm a big, so that we don't have these deals where we just release terrorists onto the street. There are, uh, Israel has released um, almost 50 uh, Hamas terrorists onto the street. Some of them live within a 15-minute drive of my house. They're they're in their homes tonight. People that have committed terror acts, have used explosives, have stabbed people, have shot people. Um, and it's obviously they're going to do this again. And we're obviously all worried that we're going to be the, uh, the targets. What do you think about those 300 bodies that have no status? Do you think they are being held captive or most likely dead? No, the 300 bodies are in, are in Israel's possession. Uh, sorry for not making that clear in the last uh, video. Those 300 bodies are in Israel's possession, but they're so badly damaged that Israel can't identify who is who. So the families don't know if, well, you, let's say you're a family and you you haven't spoken to your relatives since October 7th. You don't know if they're one of those 300, fam those 300 bodies. 
or they're being held by Hamas. You have no idea. And they can't identify. Um, last week, they identified a, a woman that was in the uh, the raid. And uh, and she uh, uh, she uh, identified a woman that was in the raid um, as one, somebody that was killed. She was missing. They identified her by a tooth that they found. Just want that to sink in. There's no body. The body was so heavily damaged, they only found a tooth. So that's unfortunately going to be a lot of a lot of people are going to be like that. Um, what technology does Israel use to find Hamas buildings? Do they already know where they are, or are they hidden? And the IDF has been exploring entering Gaza to find them. So it's a combination of all of them. Sometimes it's just they're shot at from sometimes some somebody inside a building, and then Israel's able to know. Okay, there's a Hamas person in that building, or a Palestinian terrorist, not necessarily a member of Hamas, but a Palestinian terrorist is in that building. So now we have to take out the building. Okay, is there any chance that the world powers could demand a ceasefire because the conflict is affecting their nations? Yes, the world powers could demand a ceasefire and Israel has a choice to listen to them or not. Prime Minister Netanyahu keeps saying that he would not listen to such a demand and Israel cannot stop firing. Okay. Um, will the IDF remain in Gaza during the four-day pause? Yes, the IDF is in Gaza during the four-day pause. They are not going to move away. They're going to hold on to their positions so that way they can further advance and attack from an advanced position that they've been working on. Okay, that's the end of the questions, the end of our video. Please leave your questions in the comments below this video, and I hope uh, to try to answer them by the next video. Shalom.